hey folks, dude here. Coming to you, coming to you, coming to you, coming to you. Another occasion of, um, well, this is going to be a potentially mild update. This is going to be an update where I'm going to be talking about what would dude do project. Based on the Forgotten Weapons project, also known as what would stoner do? Which was the iteration of the conclusion therein of, well, maybe not even a conclusion, but the evolution of uh, Gene Stoner's project products and the uh, the evolution therein from the Armalite extent of the AR-15 M16 family. Now, it could be said that essentially the technology back then was good, but... It was limited, but what they had. Uh, translation nowadays, we have better CNC machining. We have different metal alloys. Obviously, we have much better polymer technology. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a little known fact is that actually Colt, Colt Firearms, was playing around with an M16, polymer M16, back in the latter 60s, I believe. But technology just hadn't advanced enough for them to actually proceed further. They made a few of them. One of them was up on auction on Gunbroker. I was thinking it was like $65,000 or something, but nobody actually purchased it. I know that there is three of those rifles that was made as a Colt Tool Room project. Forgotten Weapons also has a video about that weapon system as well. I would commend you watch it because it's just that kind of cool. Now, uh, where am I going with the What Would Do Do project based on the Forgotten Weapons What Would Stoner Do project? Well, you guys have already seen the upper. Now it is going to be comprising the lower construction. What Would Stoner Do project did not use a G-Wax lower, did not use a Cavalry Arms lower. They used the KE-15 from KE Arms uh, based on the mindset the very learned execution, and the experience, hard-won experience, from a gentleman known as Sinistral Wife Rifleman. Uh, you know, obviously, they'll put his name down in the annotations here. And uh, he's a gentleman that was actually involved with Cavalry Arms. So you go, okay, well, this KE-15's cool and everything. Why don't you simply just finish up with the What Would Do Do project? Well, because mostly I don't want to base it on a G-Wax, because I don't own any G-Wax. Also, potentially, I don't want to base it on the uh, uh, the Cavalry Arms lower. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I actually do have a couple of the Cavalry Arms lowers. Okay, it also could be something along the lines of this guy, what I refer to as, what I refer to as House Toy Heavy Slash Light. This one being a Colt 1 and 7 Twist, civilian upper, which is marked 223, but it does utilize and does have a Cav Arms 1st Gen lower receiver, of which it is a included buttstock, an included pistol grip, buffer tube, all that stuff is inclusive. Now, the other thing, too, that's also really cool about this is this uses a carbine-style spring and buffer. So, it is all A1 buttstock length. This one, of course, is flying a... Uh, am I using an arms or an arms copy? I think it's an arms copy of a carry handle mount and, of course, you know, a Tasco 3x9x32. Not, not of the crazy. Of course, it does have a nice Harris-style bipad on the front. It does, of course, have a nice rebel sling. Of course, it is live 5x5 five five and cock lock ready to rock with a Magpul 30 up the pipe. Now, the other thing, too, is also this one is uniquely put together for house toy purposes. Reading, it is really not the most, you know, nimble of things in a house because you're talking something fairly long, but it is utilizing a lower of the appropriate style for the What Would Stoner Do project, but it's not going to be one of these. I have two of them. One of them is hydroprinted by one of my friends. This one is not going to be utilized, nor is the one that is hydroprinted. Both of these rifles are not going to be utilized for this project. I have on order a couple of the KE-15s. I'm waiting for them to arrive, and that will be utilized for the lower component build of the What Would Do Do project. Now, the thing about it is, is parts and everything, I pretty much have all the parts to put together the lower. The problem is, is do I have the parts to put together the lower and the lower? Uh, the lowers actually are not ridiculously hard to source, not ridiculously expensive. It's merely a case of simply just going online, finding the source, receiving them to your local gun store, and of course then taking delivery. Good stuff like that there. So, that's where we are currently with the What Would Do Do project. I'm waiting for pieces. Uh, 
of which my state will make me have to go through a couple more hoops because I'm buying lowers as opposed to simply buying a whole rifle system. If I bought a whole rifle, in some extent, it's pretty much cash and carry. But because I'm buying a lower, it's different. So I'm now waiting for the process to ongo on that one and simply proceed thusly. And of course, everything good like that there. Cat fights going on behind me, all kinds of stupid stuff. Ugh, life intrudes. All right, folks, so where we are on this one, eat good, keep tendering as always, always, you know it, you love it, good stuff like that there. And I will keep you updated on the What Would Do Do project on oh, this iteration of me building stuff. And of course, having YouTube probably go, hey, you're building guns. Yeah, I'm building guns. Deal. Keep your powder dry, folks. See you guys. Peace.